The US Army's new M2 Bradley is designed to increase survivability and oh dear god look at that turret, why is it so extra? They threw the entire kitchen sink at it with new sensors, weapons, and armor. There's barely enough room up there for a cannon anymore. That turret needs to chill out. So what new capabilities did the Pentagon just cram up there? And how are they in response to some of the modern lessons learned in combat? As of 2024, the US Army has 2,500 Bradley infantry fighting vehicles of all variants that are in operational service, with an extra 2,800 chilling lying around in storage. The US Army has enough Bradleys in warehouses to arm several small countries several times over. The current plan is to upgrade 700 of them to the new M2A4 version by 2029. According to the Congressional Budget Research document, the average age of these Bradleys is about 10.2 years old. And just how different is the M2A4 Bradley from the older versions? It's basically an entirely different vehicle, so don't dead name it. First of all, the new hull is larger and thicker on the bottom to counter landmines. The vehicle is also 7 inches higher from the ground, so troops don't slam into the ceiling and break their necks if they hit a landmine. The larger hull increased the amount of Bradley reactive armor tiles they could add for protection. However, all these modifications came with a downside. They started to add a lot of serious weight. So in its glow up, it's gone from about 25 tons to 40 tons today. With the added weight, the Bradley started to slow down as a consequence, losing about 10 kilometers per hour of max speed. So it was cruising at 56 kilometers per hour and was starting to sag lower to the ground. This might not sound like a big deal, but we have to remember the Bradley's designed to operate alongside the Abrams main battle tank while it chugs along at 68 kilometers per hour. First, I wanna tell you about the brand that made this video possible, Fishing Clash. Fishing Clash is not just a mobile game, it's a highly realistic fishing simulator designed for people who are crazy about fishing in the great outdoors. More than a simple game for your phone, Fishing Clash gives outdoor lovers a taste of mother nature anywhere and anytime. I used to look forward to summer fishing trips all year round. It was the time for the family to bond, get away, and be with nature. Now, every time I play Fishing Clash, it's like I'm back at the summer lake house. Whether it's catching different varieties of fish species, building fishing villages, or upgrading equipment, everyone will find something for themselves in this game. Duels and championships are both really fun. So if you have a competitive spirit, you'll enjoy it for sure. This year, Fishing Clash has become an official sponsor of Major League Fishing, which means real fishing events, competitions, and memorable moments will be recreated in the game for all of us to enjoy. Follow Fishing Clash on Instagram and Facebook to stay tuned about the latest news. Download the game by scanning the QR code or using the link below, and use the code CAPYARMY to get a special $20 reward, including a unique avatar for free. To redeem the gift code, follow these three simple steps that you see on screen, Again, make sure to use the code CAPYARMY. To the point of mobility, take a look at this video here. It shows the completely new heavyweight torsion bars, lightweight tracks, with new shock absorbers. This allows the Bradley to pull off parking lot donuts like you see in this video here. It's very nimble and quick. One of its main advantages is its maneuverability. That's why the A4 version received a 675 horsepower, eight-cylinder diesel engine and hydraulic transmission overhaul. It's a big step up from the original 500 horsepower engine that it got back in the 80s. All of that is to say, it's now with the A4 version regained all of that lost speed. If you watch Funker 530 videos, you're probably familiar with how frequently there are fires inside vehicles that get hit. That's why the new Bradley has an instant fire suppression system that dumps the interior with extinguishing fluid and can really save lives. Let me ask you a question, Spare Parts Army. Have you ever heard of the term Vetronics for armored vehicles yet? Vetronics is a portmanteau. Portmanteau. Uh, okay, that doesn't help for those of us who didn't go to Harvard. A portmanteau is a combination of two words like hangry or bromance. Vetronics is a combo of vehicle and electronics, like how avionics is for aircraft. It might not be sexy like a missile, but you'll appreciate the new Bradley's Vetronics when it automatically acquires targets and passes that information along to your entire battalion so you can send mutual hate on target. The other problem the Bradley was starting to face was limitations to the amount of electricity it could output and produce. According to this 2018 Pentagon report that we dug up, the M2A3 Bradley was tested with an Iron Fist active protection system on it. There were problems with the Iron Fist outside the obvious ones with the choice of name. It originally showed several problems including, quote, inconsistent capability to intercept threats, counter munitions dudding and power failure to launch, 
low interception rate countering just 50% of incoming threats. Essentially, the interceptor munition wouldn't protect or shield the vehicle like it was meant to. It goes on to state, quote, the fielded Bradley A3 does not generate sufficient power to operate the active protection system. If that sounds lame, remember the Bradleys hadn't gotten a full overhaul like this since all the way back in 2002. So the old one was the Bradley, and this is the uh, Chadley. So this upgrade aims to keep these additional systems that we're gonna get into running. Armored vehicles are a lot like power plugs at home. When you plug it into a bunch of different things, the circuit might overload and explode. The cost of the M2A4 upgrade is $4.35 million per unit, and the E1 variant adds additional millions to that. This means it's cheaper than designing a whole new vehicle from scratch, but twice as expensive compared to the original Bradley's cost. But just like how my dad upgraded and got a new family, there are several new vehicles in the Bradley family. For example, the new M7A4 b Fist variant helps deliver precision long-range fires. It hasn't gotten much attention yet, because in the past there hasn't been much need for coordinating artillery fire against insurgents. The new software and targeting capabilities allows the Bradley M7 to locate enemies, plan fire missions, and execute fast, accurate artillery and mortar fires. It does this with an instant eight-digit grid coordinate thanks to this new technology. They showed that they can put arty fire within 50 meters at 8,000 meters distance. Unlike some people in your life, this variant of the Bradley family will always be there for you. Based on evidence from recent conflicts, this largely unknown vehicle will play a much bigger role in the future. Thanks to its new ability to track and target enemies with long range fires while it's on the move. A nice upgrade. The M7 variant are being used on the front lines in Ukraine already. And my understanding is that instead of the tow missile on the side there, that's actually a giant laser target designator that sends data to nearby artillery units. Thanks to the new engine, the M2A4 E1 subvariant has finally installed the Iron Fist Active Protection System by Israel's Elbit Systems. That's the system that makes the turret look like the Pentagon used an AI image generator with the prompt turret on turret porn. Why is the system necessary? Over the past year, the old versions of the Bradley have seen intense action in Ukraine, where it's helped to repel waves of Russian assaults. Videos have shown it knocking out Russian tanks with its tow launcher, and even its HE 25mm rounds to blind tank sensors. We've observed the older versions of the Bradley destroying Russian MLTBs and BTRs. The vehicle's high explosive rounds have been used as anti-personnel rounds to suppress Russian troops and tree lines. The case has been made that the Bradley has had more of an impact on the ground in Ukraine than many Western main battle tanks. At the same time, 68 out of 186 have been reported as destroyed, damaged, or abandoned during their heavy use. That's roughly 36% of the Bradleys in Ukraine, according to my grunt math. One is even on display in Moscow right now as a war trophy. Russia is estimated to have lost 8,800 various types of all armored vehicles, including roughly 2,470 of the comparable infantry fighting vehicles that they have. And that's all that's been visually confirmed since the start of the invasion. All of this is to say, it's clear that armored vehicles like the Bradley IFV are useful as they are vulnerable, especially to the new threats on the battlefield like FPV drone teams and anti-tank missiles. That's why the new upgrade hopes to address all of these problems with survivability upgrades. Part of the reason why the turret is so crammed up there is because you're looking at radars, cameras, and sensors that it uses to detect incoming threats. Those are mostly the Iron Fist active protection system that's been finally installed after years of trying to get it to work. The new version has enough electrical power capacity to run it properly because it draws between 600 810 and 820 watts of electricity to function correctly. That's why there are four boxy looking external cameras and four small wedge shaped radar panels up there, each that cover a 90 degree arc. The larger hull leaves plenty of room for its computer processors that are located inside the vehicle. When you put them together, you get a 360 degree system, and I'm guessing an absolute nightmare for maintenance checks to add to your PMCS. If I'm operating one of those, I'm gonna have the Elbit Systems tech support Carl saved into my phone. I'm gonna know each of his kids' birthdays, and that his wife's name is Barbara, and that she's been acting kind of funny lately. And now Carl wants to know what I think that means. Originally, the Iron Fist was designed for intercepting fast-moving threats like recoilless rifle, heat 
eight tank rounds. The problem here is getting into also detecting slower moving FPV drones, which reach max speeds of only around 100 miles per hour, likely far less than that when you have a munition strapped to it. This version will get its Iron Fist light version, which stops RPGs and Cornet missiles that travel at about 250 miles per hour. The heavier version stops those tank rounds, although this one might be able to divert tank rounds. The 250 miles per hour might sound fast, but when you consider that tank rounds travel at 3,600 miles per hour, it's a major difference. When it detects an incoming threat, it then launches a small blast warhead that detonates at a precisely calculated time, which produces a shockwave that diverts the threat. Let's have a moment of silence for all the Bradley mechanics out there in the motor pool who are spending untold hours modifying these vehicles. The Iron Fist can spot enemy drones from up to a mile away and knock them out. We're talking about precision down to 300 to 350 milliseconds. Typically, blinking takes about 300 to 400 milliseconds. I didn't know that off the top of my head. I had to Google that. It's preloaded on two small rotating turrets on the Bradley turret. So it can take on two incoming attacks at the same time or up to four in quick succession before it's out of shots. It's turrets all the way down here. Wait, doesn't it look kind of familiar? I've seen that somewhere before. Oh. Yep, that's where. You're probably already familiar with the lower tech solutions to address this problem, like we've been seeing the turtle tanks from Russia. But before we laugh at that solution, we have to ask if it might actually offer just as good odds of working. It's also still unclear if the high elevation angle of the Iron Fist means that it can do full vertical engagement. That's usually a blind spot on active protection systems. According to this 2022 Department of Defense test, the new trophy system on the M2A4 Bradley has a more effective rate. However, a quote from the test states, Iron Fist continues to face effective deficiencies. It's possible that it's been improved since the original test. I mean, it adds about 1,500 pounds in weight, or three quarters of a ton, so it better be worth it. The interception rates are classified in that document specifically. However, Defense News, I found that they interviewed Lieutenant Colonel Inglesias, who is the M2A4 Bradley product manager, and he revealed that the Iron Fist on the Bradley has an interception rate of 70%. I'm not gonna lecture the Lieutenant Colonel on OPSEC, so I'm assuming he was authorized to reveal that number. That still leaves 30% of the time where I'm toast and it doesn't work. Although according to Lieutenant Colonel Inglesias, from his interview in Defense News, he said, quote, we fired a lot more shots. We made it so a good amount of those shots were in what we call an operationally relevant environment, where you have other things operating. We go into areas where there are buildings and other vehicles in the area. So they ran it through the gauntlet, they took the kids' gloves off for the tests according to the Army. We've seen how technology has delayed updates to the vehicle before, like when the six batteries in the turret overheated and discharged toxic fumes straight into the turret in the crew compartment. That might have been a safety hazard, I don't know. Those issues were later fixed, but it goes to show the type of technology issues that you can run into when you're trying to innovate. The Department of Defense test of the Iron Fist also revealed some feedback from the regular old troops who were on the Bradley. They said it would be better if you could turn it into standby mode so it wouldn't fire while troops were out of the vehicle getting in or out of the hull. Because if you're standing outside the vehicle when that goes off, there's gonna be shrapnel everywhere. Personally, I think it's kind of funny to hear that it took a soldier to point that out and say that, hey, don't let this thing blow us up when we're outside. That occurred to zero of the engineers, that means. They went on to say that it would also be nice to know if there was a near miss and the location of where that shot came from. But there are other ways for the Bradley to stop drones. The new version will have radio jammers, although we don't know how effective that'll be against drones. We know that they worked well against IEDs in Iraq. On my striker, the front of the vehicle in Iraq, we had an electronic warfare systems that would prevent cell phones from being dialed. I just realized we probably shut off cell service for a lot of people when we were driving around the AO. However, the problem with jammers is that they're active, so you instantly become a target on the enemy's radar when you're using these jammers. So where is the money coming for this M2 Bradley A4 E1 upgrade? Where's all this funds coming from? The funding is actually coming from the money to replace the older units sent to Ukraine. So it wasn't budgetary analysis, but the war in Ukraine that helped the Bradleys get these upgrades. The conflict highlighted not only the vehicle's strengths, but also its vulnerabilities in modern warfare. So in March 2024, after years of budget delays, the Army's Program Executive Office, Ground Combat Systems, announced that they got the green light and the cash to snag the M2A4E1 for every Bradley that the US has shipped over to Ukraine, so about 186. 
The US gifted Bradleys to Ukraine have become an effective way to replace the old stock with newer ones. It'd be like if I gave away my used 2008 Toyota Camry, and then I used that as a gift to write off a brand new 2005 Toyota Camry. One of those mess of cameras on the top of the turret is the new forward-looking infrared gunner sight. We know it will have better specifications than the current version that has a 4 to 12 x zoom. It has an integrated sight stabilization system so the gunner can nail far off targets accurately. An announcement from PEO Soldier made it sound like this was a third generation FLIR, but that might not be the case. It's being called an improved high definition forward looking infrared gunner sight. What we do know is that the sight will deliver better contrast, less jitter, and a high image resolution compared to its predecessors, which makes identifying targets easier. These changes are the reason why, the, according to the Army's fiscal year 2022 budget justification book, current projections indicate that the Bradley fighting vehicle and its support vehicle will remain in the Armored Brigade combat formation until the 2050s. The total budget for the upgrades to the over 200 Bradleys so far is $75 million. And what about weaponry? Although the M2 Bradley will continue using its rapid fire M242 Bushmaster 25mm autocannon, the tow missile itself has received upgrades to its propulsion system, it now has a top down attack mode and bunker buster version. You can have two in the launcher and five stowed in the vehicle. You can't say Big Army doesn't care about lower enlisted guys anymore. It only took them 43 years to add an environmental control unit now. I was a little bitch, I got pampered in the striker, we had air conditioning in there. It sucked, but it blew air in my face and that was all I needed to not pass out in 120 degrees of heat. One of the biggest complaints about soldiers in the past was not having an air conditioning unit in the Bradley. The new Bradley now has an air conditioning unit, so no matter where you wore, you'll be comfortable while you are. Replacing the Bradley has proven to be extremely expensive and difficult in its own right. In 2020, the US Army began its fourth attempt to replace it, having already spent $24 billion on previous efforts. The next generation XM30 will be procured by 2030 at the soonest. So if the Army drives these IFEs like I drive my car, they'll still be in service for a couple of decades from now. Looking at the Congressional Budget Office document, we can see the graph shows procurement of the Bradley M2A4 stops altogether in 2025. Then in theory, the XM30 picks up starting in around 2027, if all goes according to plan, which we all know it always does. That means that the M2 Bradley is likely going to still be laying down hate long after I'm dead. But what do you think about the Bradley's new additions? Let me know in the comments. In the meantime, like and share this video if you found it valuable, and subscribe for more updates on the Bradley, and join us on our Discord server. We have 5,000 members on there. Stay tuned, Spare Parts Army. Thank you for watching, and until next time, I'm Chris Cappy signing off.